Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant and this is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. For those of you that are viewing through Instagram, the short clip, please join me on YouTube. Once again, Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse and make sure you watch the entire video. Share, share, and share. And thank you guys so much for joining me on Sunday. Wasn't able to make it on Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. I couldn't make it on Tuesday. I was busy. I apologize. That's usually my first day back at work. And so today I just want to come in and talk about some stress-related illnesses. And so for those of you that have been in or are still in um, narcissistic, abusive, or even toxic relationships in general, uh, you know, in this channel, we're talking about those of you that are dealing with narcissists or in narcissist uh, relationship. You know, this is a high stress relationship. There's nothing real about the relationship. There's, there's nothing peaceful about the relationship. You know, uh, there are some people, believe it or not, that prefer to stay in rather than to feel the pain of recovery or feel the pain of even thinking of losing the narcissist but you have to know that you're living in a high stress environment you know and stress can kill and so I went to let's look and see where I went stress busting and this is a, a UK um, website too to my UK family members sorry you guys uh, phones ringing uh, but so this is stress busting and seven kinds of stress related illnesses now on this channel we talk about um, narcissist abuse and so do know that a lot of you are dealing with post-traumatic stress complex post-traumatic stress um, you know toxic relationships in general but we're talking about narcissist abuse and so here uh, you heard me talk about it before when I was talking about post-traumatic stress and complex post-traumatic stress you know you have that adrenaline pumping in your system because you are dealing with which complex post-traumatic stress is that you're consistently dealing with trauma you know the trauma of the relationship the trauma bonding the abuse within the relationship uh, and or post-traumatic stress meaning that you're dealing with a past trauma and you're still recovering from it uh, but most complex post-traumatic stress you'll find with those of you that are still in the relationship with the narcissist um, and when you're dealing with stress uh, so let's look and see what they say here who's this written by this is written by Hilly James uh, and uh, so we're talking about uh, the fight and flight um, the flight or fight uh, stress related illnesses so this is you know like PTSD the fight flight or freeze and so um, in the fight flight responses or simply the stress response it is a physiological reaction to situations that we feel we can't control from taking an exam to losing a loved one it evolved to help our ancestors deal with threats from predators or other dangers by priming the body for either fighting or fleeing now the freeze part comes in like you see the deer in the headlight look where the deer just freezes in the middle of the road they're so afraid that they tense up and they just freeze in the road and you're thinking like run run and you end up hitting the deer that's that freeze response where they don't they tense up and they don't know what to do well people do that too um, so let's look um, if we experience a stress response too often, however, it can cause stress-related illnesses. While some people dismiss feeling stressed out as being all in the mind, the effects of stress on our health now, well-researched by scientists, part, partly because the stress-related illnesses cause high level of work absentees and a huge economic cost, okay? But we're talking about narcissist abuse as well, and that could apply to you and, and the job that you work in. Uh, so let me sh uh, scroll down just a little bit. Um, so remember when we talked about previously in another video, the post-traumatic stress or complex post-traumatic stress, we're dealing with adrenaline pumping into your system. The adrenaline is telling your body it is bracing to do something. It's got to do something uh, because the, the body is tensing up to do something. And so in here it says the role of adrenaline um, when faced with a perceived threat, whether phys physical or psychological, um, our bodies produce stress hormones such as excuse me adrenaline that speeds up the heart rate the breathing rate to help pump oxygen uh, around our bodies in preparation of either fight the threat or run for the hills it can also trigger sweating and dry mouth uh, and then proceeds as this per threat proceeds so does the adrenaline if it's too long term a chronic stressor um, so chronic stressors, meaning your relationship with this narcissist, chron they are the chronic stressor in your life. And especially if it's emotional, a high level of adrenaline may lead to stress-related illnesses. Uh, okay, so let's see. Cortisol. You know, we hear a lot about cortisol. It's a hormone that's present in our body. 
uh, all the time and is vital to our functions, including regulating our blood sugar and metabolism. Um, but levels increase as effect of stress when cortisol triggers short bursts of energy, heightened alertness, and dampens down our pain responses. Remember I talked about the high level of, of uh, you know, some people have a high pain tolerance. Well, with that cortisol, that's, that it lowers the uh, pain responses in order for you to do something uh, that may cause pain that you don't know that you're in pain until after the adrenaline and the cortisol calms itself back down. Then you realize you're hurting. And so it makes the heart beat faster, the muscles tensen, it, uh, it's helpful in dangerous situation, situations, but if cortisol is uh, continuously elevated, scientists believe these responses can cause stress-related illnesses. High cortisol can reduce our sex drive and in women cause irregular periods or stop them altogether. So some of you may have experienced that, wondering why it feels like you went into pre-menopause and, and maybe your period has stopped. It might be stress, it might not be menopause, it might be stress that has caused the, your, your, your cycle to have stopped. Chronic overexposure to stress hormones have been linked to both obesity and memory impairment. So if you guys go back and watch my video uh, over narcissist abuse and brain damage, uh, I talked about you know memory impairment and, and damages that happen to your brain being in a relationship with a narcissist, an abusive relationship. Uh, and also obesity, you know stress causes weight gain. For a lot of people that are overweight, you notice that when you left the relationship, some of you have left and all of a sudden you lost weight. You got healthier, your skin clearing up you know you can sleep at night you know and some of you are still experiencing this and it's good to get in therapy that's why I talk about therapy so much uh, so here goes seven of them that are on this website one of them is cardiovascular disease and heart problems so the increased heart rate and high blood pressure are, are the two most serious health effects of stress uh, several reputable studies have shown the link between a uh, higher reported stress level at work or in this situation, I'm telling you in this situation, an increased risk of heart attacks and strokes. Do you guys know that the increase of your stress level, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, eating as a coping mechanism, you know, obesity, you're literally like eating yourself to death. You're stressing yourself to death. And you're in a relationship with this individual that always wants you to walk around in an anxiety ridden environment. They always want you to be uh, uh, unkiltered or, or unbalanced. They don't mind, they want your stress levels to be high all the time. And they always cause stress in your life. Anything they do causes stress, they show up, they cause stress. Um, let's see. Uh, it says here, if you think stress is causing these symptoms, make sure to see a doctor. Left untreated, they can prove, uh, prove fatal. So make sure you guys find a primary care provider or a doctor where you can have regular checkups. And make sure, male and females alike, that you follow the instructions of your doctor. If it means going to a therapist to teach you coping skills and, and relaxation skills. And a lot of you uh, uh, not only need to learn coping skills and relaxation skills, some of you just need to get out of the relationship, period. Now, I've said it over and over again. Some of you just can't jump out of the relationship because, one, each state has different laws that pertain to marriage and, and uh, assets in marriage. Um, also, when it comes to children, those of you who have children, you can't just jump up and leave. You can, you can, you know, uh, in some states they'll charge you with abandonment. They'll they'll uh, charge you with um, kidnapping. And so, it's good to connect to like the YWCA or to domestic violence centers that will assist you in um, escaping your situation without legal ramifications because a narcissist will use that against you. And so be wise before you just jump up and go. Some of you wanna jump up and go, uh, but you have to be wise. You got into the situation, now you have to be wise trying to come out of the situation. Find a legal advocate, find a domestic violence advocate, get as much information and legal information as you can um, to make an informed decision when you leave the relationship and when you decide to leave the relationship okay on to inflammation of skin conditions and others okay so research also research also suggests that raised levels of stress hormones can cause inflammation aggravating conditions like rheumatoid arthritis psoriasis eczema skin rashes some of you guys have like rashes and and um look like heat rashes, looks like uh, your, your skin is breaking out. It's like every time you get around this individual, it's like you just break out, you know, in a rash. Um, uh, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, IBS. Um, the altered inflam inflammatory, inflammatory uh, response 
uh, can also have an effect on your immune system, which kicks in when we try to fight off infections like colds. So the common cold becomes complicated for you to fight, especially when you're, uh, excuse me, you guys, especially when your immune system has been infect, uh, uh, affected by this high level of stress that you're in. And I've said this over and over again, um, you know, especially like if you have autoimmune uh, problems or all of a sudden now you have autoimmune problems where your immune system is fighting itself, is fighting the body. You know, you never had this before until you got into a relationship with this individual and your stress level skyrocketed. And so uh, making it hard for your body to regulate itself and fight things like common colds, you know, and especially if you're not resting, you have insomnia, you can't sleep at night, that is when the body shuts down and regenerates. Well, if you can't regenerate at night, your body can't regenerate, your immune system is being affected. It can't regenerate itself and fight, you know, common diseases and, and, and colds and, and the immune system is just off whack. Um, Let's see, even just dwelling on uh, stressful events in the past can increase levels of inflammation. Uh, your body can't even fight inflammations in your body. Uh, let me see. So, so speak to you, doctor, if you have conditions that are mentioned and think that stress might be causing and, and aggravating them. Uh, let's see, and find therapy, so find therapy. Insomnia and sleep problems. Now, for some of you, um, you know that um, a, a narcissist will purposely um, antagonize you or torment you by depriving you of sleep uh, you know trying to force you to answer a question or change your mind well they would deprive you of sleep uh, to break you down to make you more vulnerable or to make you make it easier for for you to comply to what they're trying to force you into because you're tired you are sleep deprived um, one of the most common effects of stress is difficulty switching off. Your mind is running all night, all night. Your mind is just thinking, 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 thinking. You can't shut your mind off. Now, I'm not talking about you guys that have like a, a bipolar disorder or ADHD. Uh, that you know, that's why it's good to go to a mental health provider to uh, rule out one or the other. Some of you guys, you know, post-traumatic stress or complex post-traumatic stress. ADHD and bipolar disorder appears, you know, symptomatically may appear uh, similar and the same. Uh, so those that may have ADHD or bipolar disorder and you're unmedicated, you know, this also uh, is a problem with not being able to switch your brain off. But post-traumatic stress also uh, looks that way and, and, and you have a difficulty going to sleep at night. And that's one of the questions I ask when I'm doing an intake dealing with post-traumatic stress is do you have problems falling asleep and staying asleep? Do you wake up early in the morning? You know, uh, do you have nightmares? You know, nightmares will keep you awake. Uh, and some of you do have nightmares dealing with the uh, narcissist and the abuse and the abuse that your family and children have been through. You, you, you have nightmares about it. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, so not being able to switch off your your mind, resulting in not being able to get get off or back to sleep, or awakening too early in the morning. A large study published in the European Heart Journal in 2013 made a link between insomnia and heart failure in people with these symptoms. Meanwhile, chronic sleep deprivation is likely not just to make you feel tired and irritable, but also cause accidents. You know, you can't even focus. You're too tired to focus. Many people find hypnotherapy and meditation to be particularly effective in stress-related insomnia. Uh, physical tension and headaches. Some of you have tension headaches. It's like this, this cord around the top of your head. You have tension headaches in this area right here. Some of you have tension headaches right in the middle of your forehead. Some of you have it right there in the back of your head. Uh, and you can't figure it's like somebody's drilling in the back of your head. And, or you have neck issues. Those are tension headaches. You know, uh, some of you guys and some of you guys go get Botox because you find yourself like this all the time. So now you have a permanent crease or a pro permanent frown line right here in the middle of your head. Uh, and it actually hurts right here. Some of you get Botox shots to help you relax that muscle that's right here in the middle of your head. They usually do the Botox shots right here, right here, and then sometimes up here. Um, but for those people that suffer from chronic migraines, they do like the shots in these areas, like the cluster headaches. You know, they do the shots in this area right here, which benefits, honey, because your, your skin is all smooth and your head is all straight. But all this straightens back up too, because this right here, most people have like permanent frown lines right here. You're unhappy in the relationship. Uh, so let's see. 
Um, it's not surprising that increased level of hormones that cause our muscles to tense up in preparation for fight can, in long term, also cause pain, stiffness, tension headaches. In small doses, this may not cause problems uh, and can be alleviated by exercise, breathing techniques, or hands-on therapy like massage therapies. In longer term, however, they can be harmful. Uh, depression and anxiety, that's also a part of post-traumatic stress disorder. And those of you that may not have uh, PTSD might find yourself with a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, don't know why you cry half the time, you have a conversation, cry all the time. Everything triggers you. Um, you're not, you, you don't feel like you can cope, uh, you worry all the time. Uh, but if left untreated, um, you know, when you're dealing with depression and anxiety, it can lead to serious health problems such as depression and anxiety. Well, I've said that. Uh, talking therapies like uh, uh, cognitive behavior therapy or medication. Some of you don't believe in medication, but sometimes psycho, uh, psychotropic medications or, or mental health medications uh, and find a psychiatrist or a med provider that specializes in psychotropic medications to assist you maybe short term um, uh, when it comes to stress, uh, uh, anxiety and um, depression. Now, um, in the study, uh, the trauma studies that I have, um, that I have uh, for continuing education, um, one of the instructors did mention that studies indicate that benzodiazepine like clonopin and Xanax uh, is not a um, recommended medicine, medication um, for post-traumatic stress disorder because it also uh, covers other um, symptoms, symptomology. Plus on top of that, it has the capacity of getting you addicted. And on top of that, um, benzodiazepines are usually meant for short term, like uh, panic attacks or like uh, people that are afraid of heights or flying or speaking engagements. You know, usually benzodiazepines are usually meant to be used short term, not long term. And the recommendations were um, for, uh, were to use SSRIs or SSNRIs, which are more long term medications and it's a slow release and usually full of feel the full effect, which also treats depression and anxiety uh, within three, four to six weeks. And many people have uh, stated that it has helped them a lot. And then also it is recommended that when you do get medication, you know, psychotropic medications, that you also um, go to mental health counseling to help, uh, help you know, because most people do not want to be on medication long term. Uh, but find a good trauma therapist to help you uh, dealing with depression, anxiety, and trauma-focused, you know, uh, therapy, especially coming out of these type of situations. Uh, you'll also find digestive digestive problems like irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, so stomach problems like nausea and stomach aches, and no medical cause can often be related, in particular IBS, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, a cluster of symptoms including bloating, cramps, diarrhea, constipation, and is thought to be partly stress related and the anxiety caused by needing to rush to the toilet and make problems worse. Nutrition plays a good, uh, uh, plays a part, a major role. Uh, and so if the doctor can't help, think about visiting a nutritionist, especially dealing with stomach problems. Some of you may have indigestion or GERD, you know, uh, that acid is coming back up your esophagus. It can burn your esophagus that actually damage your esophagus. And so there's a lot of stress related issues dealing with being in a toxic relationship, a high stress relationship, especially that of the narcissist. Uh, so self-medication, you'll find people using all sorts of coping mechanism um, because they're, they feel they can't leave. Uh, so they find other things, self-medication, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, um, other addiction, gambling, you know, um, let's see. Uh, so that's the end of that. And so now I wanted to take you over to um, functional neurologic disorders known as conversion disorders and so uh, I've spoke of this on another video um, so functional neurological disorders is a newer and broader term that includes what some people call conversion disorder so it featured nervous system neurological symptoms that can't be explained by neurological disease or other medical condition however the symptoms are real and cause significant stress or problems functioning and you'll find this at the Mayo Clinic um, under disease conditions, and this is conversion disorder or functional neurological disorders. And so 
as I said in a previous video before, um, a lot of, you know, mental health and physical health, uh, physiological health is very interconnected. Um, sometimes physical health or physical manifestations of, of medical problems, um, when you go to the doctor and they do tests and they cannot find a, uh, what would they call it, a organic problem or a actual physical problems that causes these symptoms, you will hear them call it somatic or somatoform and they'll tell you to go get um, mental health. So some people get very offended and, and, and argumentative uh, with the doctor by saying, oh, so you're saying it's all in my head. Oh, so I'm crazy now. That's not the case. Some severe stress and mental health disorders will manifest themselves physiologically in body aches, stomach problems. Now, remember the stress-related symptoms we were just talking about? Some of them don't have medical proof that anything medically is wrong with you and it's actually psychological. The level of stress you're under, the extra cortisol that is being released, the, the high level of adrenaline that is pumping in your system, the body aches, you think it's fibromyalgia and it's actually stress. You know, and I'm not a medical doctor, that's why I say go speak to a medical doctor, but you think you may have fibromyalgia, but what if you you have you know the stress the stress and the adrenaline that is pumping in your system is causing all sorts of muscular problems and tendon problems and and you know neck problems and migraine cluster and they can't find anything wrong but your stress level is so high it's tearing down your immune system is tearing down your body and so the medical doctors like this is a somatoform disorder or this is a somatic disorder you need to go see a mental health provider because it may be a psychological problem, too much stress. And so even with the neurolo it's the neurologic disorders or the conversion disorders, um, this, uh, the cause of functional neurologic disorders are unknown. Uh, the condition may be triggered by a neurological disorder or by a reaction to stress uh, or psychological or physical trauma. Now, some of you are in psychological and physically traumatic relationships, especially with a narcissist, uh, but that's not always the case. Functional neurologic disorders are related to how the brain functions rather than the damage to the brain structures, such as from a stroke, multiple, multiple sclerosis, or infection or injury. Um, so some of the symptoms, okay, depending on the type of functional uh, neurological disorder, there may be a significant, in, uh, uh, there's a, there are significant enough to cause impairment and warrant medical evaluation. Symptom can affect movement and function and senses. So signs and symptoms that affect the body movement and function may be weakness or paralysis. I've watched a video where um, they diagnosed an individual with conversion disorder and the person was um, a paraplegic for like years. Um, and they got them into mental health counseling, even into physical therapy to, to get them walking again, as if they had had a stroke or had been hit by, by a vehicle. They couldn't figure out how did this individual lose, lose the ability to walk and move their arms. And they were in physical therapy and they were showing this individual learning how to walk all over again and there was no medical explanation. Conversion disorder, um, abnormal movements such as tremors or difficulty walking. All of a sudden you start having tremors like you're having a seizure or it looks like Parkinson's disease. You know, your hand is, your hand is trembling, you're having problems walking, uh, stress, you know, conversion disorder loss of balance, uh, like all of a sudden you feel like you have vertigo, but you don't have vertigo, you just have loss of balance, difficulty swallowing or feeling a lump in the throat. So now there's problems uh, like a swallowing disorder, some kind of uh, problems with swallowing, um, seizures or episodes of shaking and apparent loss of consciousness. So non-epileptic seizures, they can't find any lesions, lesions on the brain, they can't find anything, they do an MRI and CAT scans, they can't find anything wrong with your brain. And episodes of unresponsiveness. Signs and symptoms that affect the senses may include numbness or loss of sensation, loss of touch or sensation. They can't feel, so all of a sudden you can't feel anything in your fingers, you don't have any sensation in your legs. Uh, speech problems such as inability to talk or slur speech. For some people it may look like you're having a stroke, but they can't find anywhere in your brain that you're having a stroke. And they just, this is unexplainable. Um, vision problems such as double vision and or blindness. There are people that have gone blind. Stress is so bad, you know, in these relationship conversion disorder, uh, where they legally were registered with their state as being legally blind and were receiving uh, uh, Social Security benefits because they were legally blind. 
Um, hearing problems or deafness. All of a sudden, you can't hear anything. They're, they're legally deaf. They cannot hear. Uh, let's see. So it says here, uh, the exact causes of functional neurologic disorders are unknown. Theories regarding the, the, what happens in the brain to result in symptoms are complex and involve multiple mechanisms that may differ depending on the type of functional neurological disorder. Uh, so basically, parts of the brain that control the functioning of your muscles and senses may be involved, even though no disease or abnormality, exi abnormality exists. Uh, let's see. So symptoms of functional neurological disorders or conversion disorders may appear suddenly after a stressful event or with emotional or physical trauma. Other triggers may include changes or disruption in how the brain functions at the structural, cellular, or metabolic level, but the triggers for symptoms can't always be identified. And so here, let's look. Okay, so I wanted to give you that information because I want you to see just how serious it is um, when you are in a relationship with a narcissist. Now, this is not just the narcissist, but this channel is devoted to survivors and those that are in relationship with those individuals that are being abused by a person that has narcissistic personality disorders. Also, we call them the narcissist. Um, and but. That doesn't necessarily mean that the abuser or the stress that you've gone through is by a person that, uh, you know, it could be a car accident. It could be a loss of a loved one. It could be anything in this particular, on this particular channel, we're talking about the results of being in a relationship with a narcissist and the high levels of stress and the trauma involved and what can happen in your body when you don't remove yourself from the stress and find help to recover. That's why I emphasize find good counseling. And underneath you'll find the links. It's the um, better, betterhelp.com. I think I said better health on another one is betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. And you can register. This is worldwide. So it's in all countries worldwide. And you can put in your requirements looking for a therapist. Uh, and they will do it online, Skype, telephonic counseling. So the counselors are accessible to you. Um, and it is this is a sponsored advertisement. And so just to let you know that this is available to you. And I highly recommend getting into some type of counseling to help you before stress ends up killing you before this situation some of you are sick some of you said you were sick some of you were overweight some of you were morbidly obese some of you said you had all sorts of uh, body problems medical issues but once you got out of the relationship you noticed that you didn't have this many problems you didn't have migraines all the time you know you're not obese anymore you eat healthier you know you've changed your lifestyle you've changed your life after the narcissist so that's why I emphasize take care of yourself Get out of the relationship as hard as it is. And remember, find legal advice because you can't just jump out of a relationship. If you've been married, you're married, you have children. If you have an investment in the relationship, find good legal advice, good, a good domestic violent advocate or a legal advocate. Get your legal rights. You know, when you're dealing with uh, uh, domestic violence uh, programs that will help you get out of the situation, whatever you can possibly do, counseling, 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 get yourself in counseling. You know, watch these videos to build up your strength, to let you know that you're not crazy. So hopefully this has helped you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you guys, as always, for all your support and questions. Um, I do want to say this. Um, for those of you that are my viewers and you guys watch out for me and everything, you know, when people start advertising, it's really, really tacky. When people go to people's, uh, you know, when, when, when you see these different coaches that have, like, um, a lot of subscribers, thousands of subscribers, do know they work very hard to win the trust of the people that that subscribe to their channel they work very hard they work very hard in creating the videos they work very hard at getting and and, and gaining your trust so it's very tacky and unprofessional when people come to a person that is already well established and that's any coach that is well established and begin advertising themselves on your channel so if you guys see it because i saw it already one time where someone was greeting all of you guys and then encouraged you to come to their channel 
that is tacky let me know and i would delete them and block them from my channel and hopefully they're not doing it to other people's channel when you you don't you don't put in a whole bunch of work on your channel and then someone else comes in and tries to convince your viewers to go somewhere no you start a channel and you do the same thing everybody else has done you know everybody else has worked very hard to gain the trust of their viewers and each person has their own set of followers some of you uh like me follow angie atkinson the little shaman Sarah Speaks, you know, Quinn Holiday off of um, Associate Direct. And I always encourage you guys, Melly Tonya Evans, Dr. Les Carter, um, and also Ross Rosenberg, Dr. Ross Rosenberg. He's really, really good. Go and, and follow them. But don't ever go on other people's site and advertise your site on their site. That's tacky. You work just as hard as everybody else work, you know, to gain the trust of the people that follow you. And if you guys see it, you let me know. You inbox me, let me know what the video it is, and I will block them from my channel. I have done that faithfully and I will do it again. And so I just wanted to put that out as a disclaimer that, you know, if you're watching and you're advertising, I will block you and you will no longer be welcome to our channel. You know, these viewers, this tribe's channel, that is tacky. You work on it yourself. You know, we put in a lot of hours, a lot of times we're tired, but we have the passion to help the people. So if we can do it, then you go out there and you work just as hard to do it too. It takes a lot to gain trust when people have been hurt. And so I take that very seriously. You know, I've gained the trust of the followers and I take that very seriously. Thank you guys for all your responses. Thank you guys so much for all the compliments. I really appreciate you guys, and I thank you guys for trusting me and giving you this information. And so if you have not already, please join me and subscribe to my channel, Dr. Karma Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hit the bell so you know whenever I upload new videos, I usually come between Tuesday and Friday. And of course, sometimes I have to miss a day because I'm working, so I do have a full private practice. Uh, and I also uh, come on live on Sundays between 8 and 9 o'clock Pacific. Pacific Standard Time, which is West Coast time uh, of the United States. Uh, I also have a professional Facebook page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. And I also have my book web page, uh, Facebook page, which is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hit the like button. I do put the, um, the, uh, the videos on all of those channels. And um, uh, please, if you have not also, go and order my book. It is unmasking the illusion of perfection it is on amazon it is on barnes and noble you can get the ebook or you can get the kindle no i have not done an audible yet uh i have not done an audible yet that does cost um i can do it in my own voice i think someone asked me to do it in my own voice i can do it in my own voice with my own little attitude uh but you remember you have to um you know it does cost to it's better to hire a, a, a acting acting a re a, a actor to read um because it does cost either way it goes it does cost you know so it is financial you know uh but don't worry i'm working on that too and so i am working on the podcast i am working on patreon which is a uh subscription base it will be a subscription base and i will be having um you know seminars webinars classes on there um, going in detail for those of you that cannot afford counseling or coaching but it'll be a nominal fee for you to follow and get educated on narcissist abuse and recovery and so once again i thank you guys so much look in the uh right below the video hit the little tab open the tab up uh, for those of you that have asked me about donations my paypal and cash app is under there and also the book links is on there and for those of you for the sponsored i do have a sponsored link on there which is betterhealth.com backslash dr carmen and you can um register pay a small fee and you can get counseling you can choose Choose your own counselor and put the information in there and this is global you can do that some of you have done that and give me some awesome feedback so once again thank you guys and go be great